How is it going? Good. How was your lunch? Good. What did you eat? You ate nothing? Well, uh, uh, if you ever had the food here, you would know that it's probably better than uh, probably as close to prison food. Mm. Just, <laughs> I'm saying they put hard work into it, but they could have had a little seasoning. <laughs> well, have you given your feedback then to the school? So. You're supposed to give feedback, right? If you don't like something, what do you do? You just sit quiet? Yeah. Talk about it. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully, yes. The air. It tastes good? I, I, I should try it. I need that, I need that in my life. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm so glad that you guys have opinions. That's wonderful because in this particular class, I hope that we can share okay share your opinions don't be afraid to say what you want to say as long as it's not inappropriate all right so about me as you can see my name is sandra fondufe i am from central africa i act i write and i teach i am the published author of three books two of them are right in front of you uh do you know how to say that how do you call the name on there on the books right on this table yes yeah, fun. Yes, yeah, fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then uh, if you look over there in the back, we have Todd. We can just say hello to Todd. And your teacher in the back, we can say hello, miss, and hello to her friend. <laughs> and to the left over here, we have my friend Shola. Shola, can you show them your cool shoes? Listen. Hey, like... <laughs> That's how you show up to a school. <laughs> and of course, I'm Sandra. You can call me Sandra, Miss Sandra, whatever is easier for you. Uh, yeah, so why am I here? Am I just here to show off my friend's cool shoes, you think? No, I hope not. Why am I here? What do you think I'm here to teach you about? How I made my hair? My books, yeah, what else? My books. Why I wrote them? Yes. Am I just trying Why to show you off with you? Uh, There's something I want to tell you. What do you think it is? <laughs> Sorry? A lesson. a lesson, yes. But then it says, if anyone can see number two, what does it say? Right. A writer's right. duty. Social, Social responsibility, duty. right? Well, I know that not all of you want to be writers, but this can apply to any profession that you want to do, okay? The things I want to share with you today are tools that you can use for any profession. And you know who inspired this lesson? Mm -hmm. Yefon. Yefon. Yes, the character from my book. So, now before we go on, let's talk about where I'm from. What country am I from? Africa. Africa. Ha! Africa. Country. Oh. Okay. Not continent. What country? Hint, hint. Look at the board. In Africa, this is the flag. It's got two O's. I hope Zimbabwe does not have two O's. <laughs> it has two O's. We have a strong soccer team. Anyone play soccer? Those, those countries have good teams. I like that you're thinking that way. But it's close to Nigeria. Not too far from Nigeria. Not too far from Ghana. Ghana has a strong team too. Cameroon. Have you ever heard about this country? Cameroon? <laughs> well, I'm glad. And I hope that today you learn about Cameroon, yes? Uh, just a few things about Cameroon. Our capital is called Yaoundé. We speak two languages, English and French. And we have several tribal languages, right? Uh, we have a volcanic mountain called Fako. And as a result of that, our soils are very, very good. We have lots of food. As you can see, I put some pictures for you. You know how we call that? Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. No, no. We, we call that soya. Yeah. Uh, and that's roasted fish and fried plantains, the way we make it in our own style. 
All right, so we have lots of food, right? But I'm only telling you about Cameroon just to give you a general context of what's going on. If you look, oh, look at the pictures up there. I forgot to talk about that. This was in April. Uh, my organization, we were doing a walk for peace. Did you guys hear about Boko Haram? Yeah. You know, this terrorist, whatever that means these days. Um, you know, he, he recruits young people and marries all these young girls, takes them away from school. Like, you'll be sitting in school and he just comes and kidnaps all the girls. You know, so it's very unfortunate, you know. So we were walking for peace because he was trying to come into our country and we were just saying that we won't have that there. Um, the name of my country is spelled in two ways. And this is in no way history class. I'm not trying to force this down your throat, but why do you think that the name of my country has two spellings? Yes. Sort of, kind of, kind of, but what's the other reason? Because you know, names of countries, no, like uh, with countries, people don't really think that way. These are like official names, you know what I mean? But why, how can a country have two spellings? Why is that? Are yes, what languages are those? Yeah. French and English. All right, so how is it that I'm African, okay, and the name of my country? Is dictated by somebody else. How is that possible? Why is that? Why do you think? Because the leader. But how did that come about historically? Yes. Yes. There was a time, you guys are too young to have studied that, but in history, in other grades, you will find out that there was a thing called the rush for colonies. And so all these Western countries, the UK, the United States was not really interested at the time. Um, you had France, Belgium, Spain. They rushed into Africa, rushed into Asia, into different countries, and took colonies. And so the name of my country has literally gone to about four names over time. The Germans once had it. The Portuguese once had it. Um, and this book that you see is set in Cameroon, okay? And what is my book about? It tells the story of a young girl, just like yourself, who, because of the law, is not able to be educated. You know what happens to people like her who try to be educated? They die. they die. It's not some, I'm going to tell your mom. No, you will die. Okay? So, of course, it's not 2017. This is a different historical period. And uh, that kind of story is called historical fiction. Yes? Because you're using the history, but then you're telling something that did not really happen just to a, a hypothetical character. Uh, what else? It's a book series like Harry Potter, like Lord of the Rings, and this is the first one. So I'm working on the second one right now. Yes. Can I just ask you a question? Yes. So in Africa, you was teaching. Uh, you was teaching out there. I was teaching. Yeah. Uh, why? Because I thought you said something. Like that. No, no, I teach here, in downtown. But uh, no, I, I I have acted, written back home for a long time. Um, okay, so the story, like I said, it's about this young girl, and something does happen. So you see the book is called The Red Necklace, yes? So her father dies, but before he dies, he gives her a magic red necklace. And this red necklace is kind of like, it's called a talisman, and it was owned by one of the ancestors. You guys don't have that kind of history, but the ancestress of the land, the person who founded the land a long time ago, yes? So if you wear this necklace, it kind of chooses you. And if you, it chooses you, then you're meant for great things. What does that kind of sound like? Have you guys watched like things like Hunger Games, those kind of stories? Yes? Moana. Moana. You know what? Perfect. Yeah. So you see, everybody would tell it how they tell it, right? I tell it in my own way, with my own culture. The writer of, of Moana, is it from Hawaii? That, that story is set in Hawaii, yes? Yeah. So they would say it how they say it. And I'm glad you brought that up because it brings me to the main, well, the first main topic of today. I want you to look at my characters. Can okay, you see what I wrote here? I was like, they're lit though. So <laughs> I just had, to, I was like, just putting it out there. Like those characters look bomb. And it's like, um, you know, it's, this is how my mind thinks. Yes. This is what I've seen. This is the culture that I grew up with. If you told this story, would it look like that? They will look like what you've seen, right? So why is it important guys? Why is it important? for people to tell their stories why is it important for people to tell their stories during the colonial period 
globally, one type of story was told. What do you see in this picture? Yeah. Is that, does that make it bad? No, it was just a single story. What is the effect of a single story? If only one story is told over time, only one kind of thing is being portrayed as beautiful, only one kind of thing is being portrayed as classy, only one type of thing is being portrayed as culture, what does that do to other people? Yes, over time. Yes, that's true. What about cultures? Does it make one culture start to seem more superior? Yes. And so what happened over time? Now you have all these diverse voices. By the way, I really like that book, the third one. It's called The Beautiful Ones and Not Your Born. It's a very funny book. Um, a writer's duty is to tell the truth, guys. A writer's duty is to paint pictures with words. Like, we are able to literally take words out of a book and paint, tell a story, such that you've never been to Cameroon, but you can read through and be like, oh, I see that, you know? It's our turn to change the narrative. From that narrative, nothing is wrong with it. But all of this and more should become the new narrative. And so if you take a good look at this uh, yellow site first, I put together a group of writers. Uh, the black lady, any of you know who she is? And do not say it's me. Because it's not, because somebody was trying to try it here. That's not me. Who is it? Do you know her? Who knows Beyonce here? All right. This is an easy way to introduce you to her. You guys know the song, I woke up flawless. No, 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 flawless, right? Yeah, so how does it start? There is a voice that says to teach girls to do this. That's her, Chimamanda Adichie from Nigeria a very feminist, proud writer. And she was speaking at TED Talks and she spoke about something and she said, um, there is a danger of a single story. That's how that whole single story became a thing. That was her speech. Now, if you look at that yellow box, you see that I brought, uh, do you know who that writer is to the, the left? Charles what? <laughs> how can it be Charles? That's a girl, a woman. Charles is a man. Mary Shelley. What did she write that you all know? Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Yeah. That's the writer of Frankenstein. So, of course, she was very unconventional at her time. Can you imagine a woman coming up with that kind of story at that time? Of course, you have Carlos Fuente from Mexico. You have Louis Ziabo from China. Chimamanda Adichie and Mary Shelley. So, I just put together a list of African names of writers and a list of Western names that you can look at later on. But um, I want to explain to you, using these pictures why we should have more diverse writers. Now, if you look up here, who is she? Does anyone know who she is? Has anyone read this book? Or heard about it? Seen the movie maybe? All right, so Jane Eyre, that's the writer of the book right there. Her name is Charlotte Bronte. So take a good look at Charlotte. Take a good look at this book. Now go back to Charlotte and come back to the book. Now, what is this one's name? What is her name? You guys are so rude for this. Really? What is her name? But what's her name though? Sandra, right? Come to Sandra's book. Go back to Sandra's picture and come back to her book. What do you see? You. <laughs> that is true. I'm on that picture. But do you see how people re reflect what's in their mind? They reflect the direct environment. Even look down to the coloring. Look at everything. Absolutely that. So if you look to the left, I speak about things like perceptions, stereotypes, beauty standards, um, names, places, looks, Yefon as opposed to Jane, for example. So this is what happens when you, if I ask you right now, let, let me ask you because I think you will talk. If I ask you to write a story, Hypothetical, what's the first thing that'll jump to you and talk about what? The truth. My life. the truth. Like, but what's your truth, for example? Give me one thing that is your truth. Your first immediate reaction. Oh. Like? What affects you? All right. Now, if I asked, uh, that's, how do I say your name again? Jo how do I say your name? Halonde. Halonde? 
dónde? ¿A dónde? Está, ¿A dónde está? Ok. If I ask a long day to... to, to <laughs> no, eso. No, that's Which one? All right, let's settle for a bit. If I ask... A long, that's you? All right, thank you. Wait, I'm right here. Wait, you want under me? That's Raul. Just tell her your name. That's all I want, just your oh, name. I'm oh, I'm Maronis. Oh. Maronis? Oh, a long day. Laronius. Oh, Laronius. All right. Thank you, Laronius. Uh, if I ask Laronius, and if I murder your name, forgive me, to write a story, his first thought is African Americans being marginalized. Yes? And you want to write about that. What about you? What would you write about? First thought that comes to mind. What about yourself? Tell me one thing about yourself that is unique to you, for example. Sorry? That you play basketball, right? If you ask Sandra to write about basketball, have you ever heard the phrase epic fail? Yeah. I won't know what to say. So you see, it's important, guys, for us to write our stories, to tell our own stories, because it challenges stereotypes. Are stereotypes true? No. Are you sure? Not always. Not always. So they're true sometimes, but they're incomplete, right? So Chimamanda says, and she says in that speech, she says, the problem with stereotypes is not that they're not true, it's that they're incomplete. <laughs> okay? So why are you angry at someone for looking at you a certain way? If you don't like the story, what do you do? Write your own. Does that make sense? Yeah. That is a very popular African saying. If you don't like the story, write your own. Don't wait for anyone to change it for you. Now, this is my own story. We'll talk about Yefon. You know what Yefon means, by the way? It means mother of the king in my language, Lamso. Yes. And by writing my own story, I was able to learn a lot. Today in this particular class, I won't have time to go over all of them. But in the first class, I went over a few. And with you, I think I'll focus more on the last one because I haven't talked about that today. Um, what is my truth, Abigail? Abigail? Is she here? Uh, Christian? Is Christian here? Abigail is here. Hi, Abigail. I see you hiding over there, girl. Don't be shy. Listen. Oh, my God. I forgot to tell you guys something. Abigail, you're going to be my test for this one. We've done this in the other classes, and it's worked beautifully. Yes? When someone stands up in front of the stranger, talk when they're trusting me, and sharing their opinion, we're going to support them. You hear that? Yeah. We're going to tell Abigail that she is awesome. Abigail. Come on, tell her. <laughs> so Abigail, all these people think you're awesome. Come on, stand up, tell us. Come on, just read that. You can sit if you like, you don't have to stand. You, you can read this. What is my truth? What is Sandra von Dufay's truth? Read that in the black. For example, EG means for example, guys. For example, mm -hmm. All right. So you would notice that I, drew, I kept drawing this girl and changing her clothes. And I was like, what's she going to wear now? Thank you very much, Abigail. You're awesome. Um, Abigail, would you like to come and pick a gift from here? Come on. Pick whatever gift you like. Because let me tell you something. She was shy. Did you see her be really shy? But she eventually overcame the shyness, right, Abigail? And we appreciate that. Please pick a gift. All right. Now, Abigail, pick someone. Who's going to read next from you? What, what's your name? Mela? Layla? 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 Okay, thank you. Layla, can you read this? Winning traits are habits that I can form, which will develop in my mind and body to succeed in any goal that I set over to achieve. All right. Thank you. She is? Uh, 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 uh. She is? Awesome. I know, right? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, um, 
what do you want to become? Ooh, I like it. Football, what else? What about you? You can just say it fast. You want to make films? I like this class. What do you want to do? I want to be a comedian. Okay. I can see that. <laughs> what do you want to be? You in the glasses? Yeah. Both of you. How about both of you? That's okay. And that's okay. The fire fire, I like that. Okay, so listen. These winning traits I talked to you about, whether you want to be a writer like me, or filmmaker, or football player, or you want to be a comedian, firefighter, even if you don't know what you want to be, these traits are going to help you immensely, even if it's a goal as small as passing this class. Okay? These traits are going to help you. We do not have time to go into it as much as I would have liked to, but we're going to quickly read a few of them. Now, let me see who hasn't spoken I would like to speak and just tell me how awesome they are. Hey, what's your name? Miguel, Miguel is what, guys? Awesome. Listen, if I have to remind you once more to talk about how awesome someone is, you should just do it because it's, it's amazing, right? I don't need to remind you. Miguel, how are you today? <laughs> Miguel, can you please read that for us, please? You can't see. Okay, can you pick someone this way that can help you? Pick someone to save you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, so when you stand up, say your name so that that doesn't happen next time. So, Because your classmates should know each other, yes? What is your name? Kaylee. Kaylee, I like your hair, it's so pretty. Kaylee, you are so All right. You're awesome. Thank you. Who said that? I owe you a gift. Come, come and get. No, no, come and get it. I love it. I owe you a gift. Oh, you were playing? Oh, it was him who said it. I owe you a gift. Yes, thank you. Because this person settled. Someone didn't need me to remind them to tell another person how awesome they are. Okay, pick a gift. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. Now, um, it's your turn. Tell us, read, read this really fast. Mm -hmm. We are young, youthful energy, life force, create an environment that encourages youthful energy, creativity, growth, and an ability to learn from your mistakes. You are? Awesome. Thank you. So, I don't have that much time, but I hope that you listen to her. Did you hear what she said? Yes. When you're young, you have certain traits. You dream, you are adventurous, you make mistakes, but then you stand up and you learn from them. These are winning traits that you must not shy away from. Sometimes because you're young, you feel like, oh, I don't know anything. That's not true. You know how to be adventurous. Sometimes grown-ups have forgotten that, you know? And to pursue any dream, to be funny, to be fresh every time on a comedy stand, you need to go, you have to be adventurous. Um... We don't have time to do that, so I'm just going to move on to the next one. Okay. Who would like to read the next one? E. Yes. We empower, oh, you don't know me? My name is Roni. We empower ourselves and others through a quest of knowledge, positive, and awesome. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. You empower. What does it mean to empower? It means to give power. <laughs> Okay, if you empower someone, guys, I promise you, it takes nothing out of you. If I tell her that her hair is pretty, does it mean that my hair is not pretty? No, it just means that her hair is pretty. That's what I'm saying. If I tell him that I admire how he writes, does that mean that my writing is not good? Why do we always feel like we have to compete with these emotions? Why don't we just give it out freely? Why not? So, see, we don't have that much time, but... There's one thing I must do. Everyone is to stand up right now. We have to do it. Stand up. All right. Trust and listen. Shh, shh. Let me see your hand if something good ever happened to you guys. Any good thing at all. Let me see your hand. 
if something bad ever happened to you? I should be everybody. Shh. Settle. Repeat after me, guys. Good things and bad things happen to everyone. You want to test it? Good things and bad things happen to everyone, okay? So because of that, whenever someone sees you, how should your face be? Like, aww. Because, because I need you not to look here. Look at each other. Pick the person right next to you and look at them. <laughs> You're so funny. Look at them. We don't have that much time. I trust that you will be quiet. Shh, 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 shh. Look at the person right next to you in their eyes. It is, it is not awkward. They are just human beings. Okay. I will not move on until everyone is quiet. Comedians, please. Let's be quiet. All right, all right. Shh, look at that person. And listen to my questions. You can answer with yes or no. Can you read their mind? No. Do you know what they are going through? No. This is not being, this is not cool, people. This is a very intimate exercise. I need you to trust me that I, I only want to help. <coughs> So be quiet and look at the person right next to you. And I thank you so much for listening. Like I was saying, can you read their mind? No. Yes. Do you know what they are going through? No. At home? No. School? No. What about even right now? No. So those answers were all no. You are going to repeat these words while looking at that person because you're, you're talking to that person, not to me. Not to the air. I can empower you. I can empower you. I will empower you. That doesn't make me silly. It makes me strong. And so, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, shh. Listen carefully, shh, shh. from the bottom of your heart, shh. looking at that person in the eye, from the depth of your soul, I want you to tell them, you're awesome! You're awesome! <laughs> All right, sit down. <laughs> Thank you. So, 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 you see guys, empowerment is amazing. Everyone is happy right now, aren't you? The vibe of the room, believe it or not, has gone up this is what happens when you empower now because you're in school i need to make this very strong point people always think that empower means only saying nice things is that true if someone brings their work to you their writing their painting their comedy skit their soccer whatever it is that they want to do tell the truth you owe them that i'm not saying that you should kill someone's ego and send them to the no i didn't say that there is something called constructive criticism which means what? Yo, I like the color, but those words though. Can you, can you, you know, no, I'm, this, this is hypothetical. I like this, but I'm saying, yeah, right. So I'm saying if, let's say you didn't like the words, instead of saying, oh, I don't like it. You can say something like, hey, the color is kind of nice, but maybe you could shift this, the, the, the fonts to the front a bit. Do you see what I'm trying to do there? No, however, it's totally fine. However you see it, it's fine. And that's yours, actually. But um, you've been very, very um, good, bringing good energy to the classroom. So I'm saying that empowerment is very important. And we need that. It's our social responsibility as artists to share, to empower people, to entertain when we write. Um, what does Y mean? We are young. What is E? Empower. What is F? Focus. Because we don't have time, I'll just make you look at these words. Please look for the word diploma. 
Okay. All right. Can I, can I, can I assume? Can I, can I assume that all of you here at least have the goal of having a diploma? Okay. How many minutes do I have, miss? 15. Okay. So let's assume that that's the goal. Yes. Get a diploma. I know you have different goals, but just this is one that everyone can at least use. <laughs> hey, did you see my fall? I was like, <laughs> all right. So in order to succeed, we've talked about being young, being empowering. You have to be focused on your goals. Listen, your goal is only one thing, the diploma. But do you see a bunch of noise around it? Yes. What does noise mean? Do I mean literal talking? No. I mean, distractions. Instagram. YouTube. Snapchat. Eyebrow tutorials. Okay? So, you, that's true. You, you need those things. Very true. But you need to do it all the time. So, you know what you can do? You can reward yourself. So, for example, I'm going to make a goal. Listen, I'm going to do homework for two hours. If I succeed in the two hours, then I'll give myself 10 minutes of Instagram. Do you see how you're pushing your goal, but you're still living? Yeah. yeah. yeah don't just spend your whole time looking at someone else's dream on Instagram. Is that how they got there? Yeah. No, that's not how they got there. They got there by being disciplined. Discipline means what? It means that I'm going to do two hours after work. After work for me, after school for you. And it doesn't matter what's happening. It doesn't matter what 2 Chains just sang about. I'm going to do my homework right now. 2 Chains can wait. He already has money. I don't have money. I need to be like him. Okay? I need to be like Ciara, Beyonce, whoever it is that you like. So they can wait. These two hours are from my homework. What is that called? Discipline. Do you think that when Beyonce was a child, when she was rehearsing with Destiny's Child, you think that if a big celebrity was asked her, she would have run to go there during rehearsal time? If Beyonce did that, she won't be Beyonce. Do you believe that? Because talent is not enough. Newsflash, hello. It takes discipline. It takes consistency. It means I'm going to do it every day. Monday, Tuesday, when it's raining, when it's sunny, when I'm sick, when I'm not sick. That's how Kobe Bryant becomes Kobe Bryant. Do you believe me? Do you know that after he, after he finishes a game and he has won, he still practices? Can you believe that? Yes. Consistency. Now, the other word is follow through. It means that it's not just, oh, when the semester begins, oh, my God, I'm going to do all my homework every day. I'm going to come to work on time or to school on time. I'm going to be on the, 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 what's it called? Do you guys have, like, student of the week or month thing? Yeah. yeah. In, like, end of September, where's your homework? The cat ate it. Where's your homework? My sister snatched it. Where's your homework? I didn't do it. Hey, where is the consistency here? Listen, let me tell you guys something. When you leave school, nobody's going to chase you about your work. If you like, do your homework in college, don't do it. Does anyone care? No. Now, who is going to be broke? Is it you or your teacher? Your teacher is already getting paid to be here. Do you know she's it's a job? She's getting paid to be here. You know that? And she got here by doing what? These things. So I'm saying to you that to develop a habit of success, you don't have to look over your shoulder for if mom is watching. If she's there or not, you need to. I, you know what I do every day after work? I teach, I go home, and I write for four hours every weekday. Weekend, I write for six hours. Whether I'm sick, if I, if, yeah, if I have to go party with my friends, I will write first and we can party after. You can ask me, my friends will tell you that. Because I see myself somewhere. I want to be one of the greatest writers that live from my country. So... I know I'm not going to get there by wishing. I have to work, put in the hard work. Okay? So one book is not enough. It's not what I want to be. Original. This is a powerful one. You see, we all have things about us. This is something I learned from Yefan, actually. We all have things about us that make us us. And we can try to be like everyone else. I use myself. I don't want to go into your personal. I can, use, I can make fun of myself because, as you can see, I don't really care. So, I have big eyes, obviously, and I've got a gap tooth. And when I was growing up, and they'll call me like four guys, and I'll cry and cry, and, and I hated them so much. And it was like all American celebrities had straight white teeth, no gap. No, I know, but 
I thought that was, you know, I thought that's how you have to be. But guess what? If someone is going to remember you, would they remember that or your essence, your spirit? Like how you made them feel? Yeah. So I started to learn that I had to take those unique traits about me. And instead of making it not work, I'm going to make it work. So now, for example, with my hair, a lot of now being, having natural hair is popular. When I, when I went natural, it was not popular. It wasn't popular to have hair like this at all. Do you guys, well, the black girls know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, right? You guys, ladies? Okay. I, no, I just had to, because they would know what I'm talking about. It was not, this was not fashionable. You had to have, you know, like uh, your hair, maybe. I can still do that, but having the choice to know that that's just a choice. I don't have to look like that. That's what it means to be original. And guess where this has to show? In your work. In your, in your work, in your craft. If you're going to be a comedian, I keep going back to you. Can you just say the same jokes that everyone says? No. Nah. You need to bring your own style. Even if you're going to play soccer, it doesn't matter what it is. Those who rise to the top of every industry are very what? For example, look at that picture. What do you notice? What color is she? Green. Everyone else is what? Green. Why is she green and everyone is, is gray? She's <laughs> Yeah, she's awesome, but what would happen if she blends into the crowd? She won't be original. Guys, I say here this particular quote, something I wrote when I was about 24. I dare you to stand out. You want to be normal to blend in? Well, you are in for the unhappiest ride of your life because you live in a glass wall where you're hiding your true self and you're so miserable because you're not you, i mean you have to go to work and be fake go go to church be fake go to the store be fake be yourself just be yourself it doesn't matter how weird and difficult it is at the start but eventually you become yourself to the world and especially if you're going to be an artist that is what is going to make you excel nurturing this is the first class where i was able to like actually get here impressive but this is a very powerful tool especially those of you who want to become artists there is so much pressure guys even not even you know what not even artists just in real life there's so much pressure no about nurturing this pressure when you get older you have to pay bills take care of your family go to work still have a dream and still kind of do all of it you know understanding that everybody here is a person the animals the planet we all have to take care of all that stuff and it starts with who you if you don't like yourself are you a happy person you'll be mean to other people so you have to start by loving yourself like patting yourself in the back go like this what's up you know check don't be afraid to check in with yourself every now and then you know how am i feeling am i okay listen you're doing the best you can just it's okay just calm down that person was rude to me right now that is them i don't control them i control myself i'm going to walk those are certain winning traits that over time, when you practice them, you're able to be successful. And I put this thing here just yesterday because I was telling the class before. I lost one of my classmates. One of my classmates died, like, this last week. And the last time I saw her was in high school. I haven't seen her all these years. And then I hear and she's like, she's dead. And it just made me, I was just thinking to myself, oh, no, I, I'm, it's okay. I'm just saying, I'm only bringing that up to tell you guys that, like, I know right now you're in school and this is your, rea your, your reality. Um, but life doesn't really end here, okay? So before you open your mouth and insult another person on their appearance, something that they cannot really change, just remember that they might be the president tomorrow. You have no way of knowing. Even if it doesn't seem that way, I promise, life is so unpredictable. And do you want to be that person that could have had a hand in something, but the person doesn't like you because you were mean to them? Does that make sense? It makes no sense to be mean at all because you think that, oh, because I'm the biggest athlete in school. Pff, let me tell you, 20 years down the road, it might not be the case. And it might be the case. I'm the prettiest girl in school. 20 years down the road, like, who that? You know what I mean? You know, or I'm not so pretty. 20 years down the road, that's Miss America. Do you believe what I'm saying? You have no way of predicting what will happen, but just be nice to everyone. Like, I hope that when you remember this Cameroonian girl, you will smile. Like, oh my God, that was a fun thing. I hope that's the feeling I gave you today because that's very much my intention. 
So, thank you for your time. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you, you're awesome too. Um, how much time do we have? Five minutes, okay. So, uh, who is the most creative person in this class? I know, I know, I know. I'm asking, who is the... No, but who, yes, that's true. Who is the most creative person from your experience, from what you know? Justin? What, what, what do you do, Justin? All right, here. Thank you. All right, let's do, uh, who can tell me what all the words mean? So Y-E-F-O-N, what does it mean? If you remember, put your hand up. Yes. Yes, the queen, but what is the meaning of the acronym? Who remembers? Someone else that hasn't talked. Yes. No, not her name, but the acronym. We went over it. Y E F O N. I am. Who? If, shh, shh, if you remember it, let me see your hand. Yes. Young, empowered, focused original and nurturing thank you very much all right two more gifts and I, I don't want to leave here with them i want to give someone um what is the capital of cameroon who remembers it no it starts with a y okay that's too difficult okay what is How do you say my last name? Someone who hasn't talked. Yes. Yefon is the, is the book name. What's my last name? Yes. No. Sandra what? Fon. Fon. Sandra. Fon Yeah. Here. Thank you. You can put this on your backpack. It's very cool, actually. Okay, the last one is only for a girl because if a guy has this, unless you're going to give your sister, I don't really know what you do with it. But um, over to your teacher. I don't know what to ask. <laughs> um, ooh, I can answer anything you got about science. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. We all know. Um, if anyone can tell me without looking, it's going to be a periodic table question. Let's go, okay? No, okay, no, it's okay, you can look. Okay, if anyone can tell me the number of valence electrons in helium. Oxygen. Wait, in helium? In helium. Oxygen. Oh, dude, we had this in, um, valence electrons in helium. Wouldn't it be like one or 18 or something like that? Jeremiah, you, you have a sister because apparently it's a girly gift. It is a girly gift. You have a sister? <laughs> you got it right. So, okay, give it to your sister. Give it to your mom. Yeah. Give it to your two other. Guys, thank you so much for your time. I hope. Did you learn something today? Yeah, I learned. All right, wonderful. Hey. Um, do we have. Oh. I don't know if we have time. We take pictures outside. If we do, I don't know. Oh, look, guys. I got this for one of the classes. I thought that was cute. I'm gonna color it. Really? You have an art? Piece of art? Um, for, for Thank artists, you. If you guys have your, your sketchbooks for those oh, of you who have prices, because I I where's your art? This is one of my most prized prices. That is pretty. Can you can you sign your name there? Oh my god. Yeah. Well my name my artist. Your artist name. What's or what's your paint name? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, here, don't forget this. Still a warning. There's a lot of artists that just. Oh, yeah.
There you go. Yeah. Marcus? Marcus? Is it Eliza? Eliza? Oh, it says Marcus in the back. Who is this? Uh, the Ninja Turtles? Oh. We didn't really have time to do what we normally do. And when we get back, I'll give you guys your stuff. I have my reminder.